Here's your forecast first from your weather authority. Good evening, everyone. We've got some nice weather around the valley. Could be a little fog out there in places, but I want to start by showing you what the cam looks like. And up in the Terre Haute area, we're looking kind of northbound. That's towards the ISU campus. You can see all clear around the area. As far as the temperatures out there right now, we're running in the 70s, 75 in Terre Haute, 72 up in Paris. When you look at the regional radar, nothing really showing up near this area. All the rain is off to the north, and that's even very scattered in nature, so we're in pretty good shape. Here's a look at the forecast. We're talking about temperatures tomorrow morning, 68 degrees. We'll talk about more rain in the forecast, though, in just a few minutes. Proud to serve the Wabash Valley. This is NBC2 News at 11. I'm very grateful to finally have the right to, to get married to the person that I love. Several same sex couples made history in Vigo County today. Find out what the first couple to be married had to say about this special day. Plus, it's the season for farmers markets, but vendors in Illinois will have a new set of rules to follow this year. Not everyone's happy about it, we'll explain. Good evening and thanks for joining us here on NBC2 News at 11. I'm Tom McClanahan. And I'm Sydney Benter. It's a historic night in Vigo County. This evening, the county clerk's office began issuing same-sex marriage licenses to local couples. It comes as a federal judge ruled Indiana's ban on same-sex marriage as unconstitutional. In his ruling, Judge Richard Young wrote, in less than a year, every federal district court to consider the issue has reached the same conclusion in thoughtful and thorough opinions. Laws prohibiting the celebration and recognition of same-sex marriages are unconstitutional. Since the judge's ruling, many same-sex couples in the state have lined up to apply for marriage licenses. And several couples exchanged vows at the Vigo County Courthouse this evening. NBC2's Brett Edwards is at the courthouse where he talked to the first same-sex couple to be married in the county. Thanks, guys. Nikki and Donica Baird have been together for 11 years. When they woke up today, they never thought the day would end the way that it did. You may now kiss your bride. It was an emotional ceremony for the newlyweds. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it's historic. I'm yeah. very grateful to finally have the right to, to get married to the person that I love. Um, we've been waiting a long time for that. Nikki and Donica have dreamed of this day for many years, but never thought it would become a reality. We were hopeful, especially with as much as like things have been changing the last yeah. couple of years, but if you had asked us just even a couple of years ago, no, I never yeah. could have thought. Their friend Amber saw the news about the federal judge's ruling on Facebook and immediately texted Nikki, who was at work. I was like, hey, did you see? It's unconstitutional in Indiana. When are we getting married? And uh, I texted Donica, too, and apparently I woke Donica up, and she was like, now, let's go. She um, heard about it and texted me, and that's how I found out. And so, yeah, I, I um, texted her. She was at work. work. I said, you need, to, you need to get home now. I need to marry you, stat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> came right home. <laughs> so she yeah. came right home. Amber is thrilled to be a part of Nikki and Donica's special day. They deserve this. They deserve the same happiness that everyone else has. Um, and now that it's legal, I mean, they've been together for so long, and now that it's legal, it's just the icing on the cake for them. It's just fantastic. The newlyweds say today is unlike any other they've ever had. It's exciting. It's, it's wonderful. Exciting. It wasn't what we were expecting at all. We just wanted to make sure that we got in here today. Yeah. Um, and it was just icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great to be even bigger part of history than what yeah. we thought we were originally going to be. Judge Christopher Newton, who performed the ceremony, tells me that six couples total were married here today, including Donica and Nikki. Back to you guys at the station. All right, thanks, Brad. It was a busy scene at the Marion County Clerk's Office this evening. That office stayed open until 8 p.m. tonight to accommodate the dozens of couples wanting to be married. There were so many couples there, the line nearly stretched out the doors of the Indianapolis City County Building. Although the timing of today's ruling was a surprise, Marion County Clerk Beth White says she was expecting Indiana's ban to get struck down, so her office was ready for the crowds. We are prepared for the onslaught. We understand what it means. The demand is great, and we're going to try to stay open uh, as late as we can this evening, and then we'll be ready to go again tomorrow. Indiana Attorney General will appeal the judge's decision and has filed an emergency motion for stay in U.S. District Court. Pending the appeal, the U.S. District Court hasn't ruled yet on that stay. Governor Mike Pence's office released a statement saying Pence supports the Attorney General's reports or efforts to appeal the ruling, but that the state will comply with the federal court's order during the appeals process. 
Indiana is now reviewing the movement of money within several Terre Haute City bank accounts. Through the Freedom of Information Act, NBC2 received and reviewed redevelopment bank accounts and several emails between City Controller Leslie Ellis and Redevelopment Commissioner Cliff Lambert. Ellis and Mayor Duke Bennett say they're working to comply with a new state law that requires the City Controller to act as a treasurer of redevelopment funds. But Cliff Lambert claims the City has misused that money. Bank statements do show that hundreds of thousands Thousands of dollars have been moved from redevelopment bank accounts into other accounts such as city payroll. The state examiner met with both sides as well as city council members Tuesday evening and now says the state board of accounts will be looking into those redevelopment funds. Mayor Bennett says the city has worked with the state board of accounts from the beginning to ensure they're following all the guidelines. In a statement, Commissioner Cliff Lambert says he's looking forward to the review. You can read that statement online on our website, mywabashvalley.com. Local police are getting ready to enforce new laws that will go into effect on July 1st. One of those laws says police need a warrant to search cell phones. Police won't need warrants to search in extreme situations like a shooting or kidnapping, but when it comes to texting and driving, police will need a search warrant to look through someone's cell phone. Local law enforcement says officers will be trained on the changes in the coming weeks. With the new changes, it's going to make it a little bit tougher for law enforcement. They're going to have to be a little bit more thorough in their job, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Another law going to, into effect on July 1st impacts the Indiana Department of Transportation. It will shorten the length of the court process when NDOT wants to obtain land. Meanwhile, farmers markets in Illinois have to follow some new rules. The number of farmers markets has grown tremendously in the last 20 years, but there weren't clear-cut guidelines for vendors until now. NBC2's Kelsey Gibbs has more. If it wasn't for the farmers markets, I wouldn't have the business. Mark Bauman and his son try to make the old capital farmers market every year. Bauman says each year he looks forward to participating because his family depends on the income. If it wasn't for the farmers markets, probably half of these people wouldn't be raising anything. Part of the new requirements include displaying exactly where a product comes from and listing what if any pesticides were used. Bauman says he'll comply with the law, but doing so will take up a lot of his time. It's just a matter of time before the state of Illinois comes down to enough rules and regulations that run people out of business. There's already a farmer's market task force. These new regulations will help make compliance checks quicker and easier. Matt Daniels is glad the new rules are in place. He's been selling his produce at markets for close to 15 years. But a lot of times people don't know the right questions to ask, and I think then it gives them an opportunity to then see where their product is from, the ingredients in it, and then maybe ask some more questions. Daniels says he does understand why some are against it. So the vendors that probably don't believe that it's a good idea may not be raising their own product. Illinois ranks third in the nation for number of farmers markets. With more than 375 known markets in 2013, only California and New York have more than that. The new law takes effect immediately. Well, someone was taken to the hospital after a car rolled over in southern Vigo County this afternoon. The SUV was heading northbound on US 41 near State Road 246 just before 5. It somehow rolled onto the driver's side and into the median. Traffic was slow while crews worked the scene. No word on the extent of those injuries. People in central Indiana continue cleaning up after a tornado touched down on Tuesday. The National Weather Service preliminarily confirmed that the twister that touched down in Plainfield was an EF1 category. It had wind speeds up to 110 miles per hour. More than 30 homes in both counties sustained damage in that area. Some were heavily damaged. There were no reports of any injuries. Still to come on NBC2 News at 11, our own Jesse Walker was hitting the pavement tonight <laughs> to help usher in a summertime tradition. Our cameras tagged along for the festivities. And later in sports, Jason Penske is here with an inside look at Jake Odom's preparation for the upcoming NBA draft. You're watching NBC2 News with Tom McClanahan, Sidney Benter, Chief Meteorologist Jesse Walker, and Jason Penske Sports. This is NBC2 News at 11. For these stories and more, log on to mywabashvalley.com.